G'day everybody, welcome to another Affinity Composite tutorial. Today I'm going to start off with this picture of this dystopian landscape here. The first thing I want to do is just get rid of this little distraction here. So I'll come to my in painting brush and I'm just going to paint over that little distraction. Next thing I want to do is just click on my filters here and add a small Gaussian blur. Make sure you click on preserve alpha and we're just going to go 0.7. Then we can click off that. And what I want to do now is just bring over my next photo, which is going to be this water here. Make sure you clicked on that layer, the water behind layer, over to my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to make a square just so it's underneath that jetty in the distance. And then I can hit delete on my keyboard and command D just to get rid of the marching ants. What I'll do now is come back to my move tool, hold my shift key down and just stretch this right across the photo here and then a little bit up as well. I'm just going to position that just sort of about here and then what I'm going to do next is grab my smudge brush tool and I'm at 82% on this. Make sure we're on that water behind layer. I'm going to go right along this line here just smudging a little bit and it's going to look a little bit like sort of a mist or sort of like a like the wave that's uh, going over to the beach. Just hides that line a little bit as well. So that's not too bad. We'll bring over our next photo now, which is this picture here. What I'm going to do is just get rid of the sky again here. So I'm going to come and use my flood selection tool here. I'm going to make sure that my mode is on add here. And I'm just going to click a few times just up the top there to get the just the sky here. I will click on refine and I'll just feather that by I think one pixel and hit apply. Then again, I'll hit delete on my keyboard. Command D to get rid of those marching ants. And you can see it's got a little bit left over here on the edges because I feathered it. We'll grab our erase brush tool and we'll erase that away. And we might grab our smudge brush tool again and might just go across that line as well. So that blends in a little bit better. On our move tool again, and again holding my shift key down, we'll stretch that across. And maybe down a little bit. And we'll put this in place, stretching it all the way across and then maybe up and up a little bit as well. To about there. Now I want to match the colour of this waterfront with the back of the water here. So what I'm going to do is add a recolor. Clip that to the waterfront here. And a little trick, if you grab your color picker here and try and find a really dark green, about like that, you'll see that the HSL gives you some values here. So I'm gonna use those values on my recolor here. But I might just go a little bit higher. 195, 36, I think I'll go a bit darker with 42. And then on the light, I'm going to go minus 32, just a little bit. And just have a look at that. That's not looking too bad. What I'm going to do on that waterfront layer at the moment is make a copy, Command J. And I'm just going to bring that up the top and just turn it off for now. And I'm going to bring in this other water picture here. On this one, I'm going to come up to Layer, Arrange and Flip Horizontal because I want the the rocks here on the bottom over this side. Again, holding my shift key, I'm going to stretch that all the way across and bring that all the way down. Stretch that up a little bit. Just so those rocks are in the corner there. What we'll do with this now is on here, we'll add a mask and make sure our colors are back to black and white. Hit D on your keyboard. We'll grab our gradient tool. Right in the middle here, I'm just going to drag up until I just see that floor on the bottom there. What we'll do now is grab our robot on our move tool and we'll just position him on the bottom of the floor where we think he's going to go. And also our activate box. We'll just bring that in. Bring that into the picture as well. We'll sit that about there. That water floor I'm going to bring to the top of the robot there. I'm also going to turn on this other water now as well that we copied, and that's going to cover that up, but that's okay. What we'll do is add a mask, grab our brush, 
and we'll make the flow about 15%, and then on that mask that's already there, we've already got the mask, we'll make our brush a little bit bigger, we'll make sure we're on a nice soft brush, which we are, and then we're just going to brush that bottom away there, just nice and easy, right into the corners, making my brush a little bit smaller, then I'm going to just brush some of that top away as well, just here, so I can see that activate button, and then just a little bit around the legs here, so it just makes the robot look like he's in the water. Okay, I might just go back to my layers here. Okay, what I'm going to do to my activate box here, I'm going to add that blue recolor. So I'm just going to copy the one above, Command J, bring that down to my activate box here. But on that recolor, I'm going to go Command I and invert it. I'll grab my brush, I think I'll have about 15%. Make sure our colors are on black and white. I'll just change to white with my X and I'm just going to color that box underwater to the blue color. And then back to black, and then I'll just take bits away, just above the water here. I also want to recolor my robot here to look a real pale yellow. So again, we'll grab our recolor, clip that to our robot, I already know the values that I want, so I want 60, 42, and minus 32. It should give me that sort of very pale yellow colour. On the top of my robot here, I'm going to put a new pixel layer, and I want to add sort of some colour into his eye here. So we'll bring up our flow to about, we'll bring it up all the way to 100. We'll change the blend mode here, we'll change it to soft light, and we'll zoom in on our robot's eye. We'll make our brush really, really small, and we'll paint a little bit of white in there, and then we'll paint some blue as well. A little bit more white. Command zero, and it just sort of makes that little robot sort of come alive a little bit more, like he's got some light in his eye. So leave that like that. On our robot, I'm going to add a exposure and darken him up a little bit. Let's make sure that's clipped to the robot. I'm going to invert that as well. Now on my brush, making my brush bigger now, drop the flow uh, back to 25. Because all the light's over here, I'm just going to darken this side of my robot up a little bit. And then what we can do is switch to black, drop our flow down to about 12%, and we'll just blend that in a little bit more, a bit of light on his hand here. I'm going to add an exposure to my activate box as well, just darken that activate box up a little bit. It's a little bit better. And I'm also going to add that recolor again, Command J, and I'm going to add that all the way down onto my background and drop the opacity on that to about 60%. It's going to add my birds in now, so let's bring our birds in going to change the blend mode on the birds to darken. Grab my move tool, bring them down a little bit over the top of those sort of stacks there. And we might just add, what we'll do is we'll add a curves onto those, clip those to the birds, and we'll just bring up our blacks just to blend them in to that background a little bit. Just blending them in, that looks pretty good. So we've got our birds blended into the background. Okay, what I might do is add one more pixel layer to the top of my robot here. I'm gonna grab a brush, and I'm gonna grab this ink spatter tilting brush, which is in the sprays and splatters. Back on my layers, make sure I'm sort of a white color. So let's grab a pixel, sort of a lighter color, and then we'll go a little bit lighter about here. And then just in front of our robot, we might just add 
just on the legs here where he's going into the water and the hand here as well. Just around the legs, make it a little bit more detailed there. Let's go up to the top and merge all those layers, merge visible. We'll come across to our move tool here and we'll hit develop. On my basic here, I will just bring up the clarity a little bit. And on my details, maybe a little bit, maybe 20 on each one or close to as 20 that you can get there. And on my noise, I might just add about 3% noise and hit develop on that. So there you go, everybody. That is my latest composite in Affinity. If you would like to support my channel, you can head over to my Buy Me A Coffee site. And while you're there, you will be able to grab the robot and the activate box absolutely free. So if you have enjoyed the tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I'll say to you, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video.